these are the legacy fours. These are the continuation from the legacy threes in T Audio's legacy lineup, the three, four, five, and nine. And they are an improvement to the legacy threes, but how much? Now, disclaimer before we start the review, this unit was bought by Brian. He bought them from a seller on Tokopedia, which we are not affiliated to. We are also not affiliated to any brand or such, so this review is completely of my own opinion. Now, TLDR of the Legacy Force. Overall, they're like a slight V-shaped tuned IEM uh, with switches on the back to alter that signature ever so slightly. The switch number one doesn't really do a lot of things, and switch number two decreases or increases the bass. Um, it's just an on-off setting, so you could view it either way, but you get the point. Um, and overall, it's just a pleasant set. But how pleasant? Now, we'll get into that right about now. We'll start off with bass like we usually do. So the bass of the Legacy 4s, I think, are quite well done. The sub-bass is... A bit emphasized, you can hear quite uh, the rumble quite well. I think for EDM this will still be sufficient, especially the mid bass. I think on uh, on the number two off setting, um, these will still have enough kick and punch in the mid bass in order to satisfy most uh, neutral-ish seeking audiophiles. If you're looking for a more bass heavy IEM, I think these will probably be a bit lackluster. Uh, depending on your listening volume, of course, but um, I don't think these are the most bassy IEMs. Although I mentioned that they are slight V-shaped, they're not that heavily V-shaped. So um, yeah, if you turn off this, uh, if you turn on the number two setting, I keep getting these backwards. If you turn on the number two setting, the bass will actually be reduced by a couple dBs, and at that point, I think the texture in the bass is just a bit lackluster. If you keep that off, uh, the bass uh, bass I think has overall a nice texture. The speed is also just right. It is quite fast, but not too and uh, not too slow that it falls behind on faster music. Uh, if you turn it on, uh, not only will it reduce the bass, but it will also speed up the driver even more. At that point, the texture and overall speed just feels a bit. Mm, the speed it d does get faster, but the texture just feels a bit lackluster at that point. So. I don't like that setting. I, I don't like it when the number two setting is on because the bass just feels a bit one note ish. And yeah. Overall, I think bass is well done. On the number two setting as off, I quite like it. And the bass doesn't really bleed into the mid range. And uh, this is provided by a dynamic driver. And I think this dynamic driver has been tuned quite well. And the crossover has also been done quite well because it is quite coherent coming into the mid-range. Now coming into the mid-range there's not a lot if any at all bass bleed and the mid-range is quite clear details are also quite good uh, in this $200 price range I think they fare quite well separation overall is also quite nice um, there's not a lot of things I can complain about in the mid-range the mid-range tonal uh, note weight I think feels it feels just a bit on the sort of slightly thick side it's not too thin but not too thick also but it's a more li more leaning about in that range uh it's it also doesn't have a really high upper mid emphasis it does like rise slightly in the upper mid just to keep it things more exciting compared to its predecessor the legacy trees so my problem with the legacy trees what actually not really a problem but the legacy trees itself were a more of a relaxing pair. These are like the Legacy 3s, but a bit more, um, a bit more bright, slightly more bright. So the Legacy 3 Legacy 3s were more of an L shape. I am these are more V shape. Now, the mid range. Then I don't I don't really have a lot of complaints about. I think overall it's quite a nice mid range. <laughs> Leans a bit more into the brighter side of things. Um, it, do it, it doesn't feel as thick as the Legacy 3's mid-range. So, yeah, just... Yeah. Now, when we get into the tribal region of the Legacy 4's, this is probably the thing that will be uh, quite different compared to Legacy 3's. There's quite a bit more tribal than the Legacy 3's. You will definitely feel that when you move from the Legacy 3's. Overall, tribal is increased by like 3-ish decibels. 
by my ears and this is probably if you like the legacy trees you wanted a brighter legacy tree this this is it like th this is it it's there's no other way around it it's just so close to the legacy trees in terms of tonality except for a couple of minor things that i can't really I can't really comment on the legacy force without commenting on the legacy trees. Cause the treble itself, although it has increased in terms of quantity, technicalities wise it has not increased that much. It has increased slightly, but not that much considering the price hop. Um extension is also I think on par with the legacy trees. I don't think these are um these are bad in extension, but my hearing stops at 17k, so I'm not sure if it goes beyond 17k or not. But most music doesn't go anywhere near that region, so you're gonna be fine. Speed overall is also still the same. It's it's not the fastest treble in the world, but it does its job. It doesn't get too splashy, if at all. Uh, simple crashes are also fine. It's also... Mm, it's a bit more sibilant than the legacy trees. I believe it's just because of the uh, increase in treble quantity. But yeah, it doesn't really overemphasize sibilance uh, if you are very sensitive to sibilance, which I am. So to me, these are fine. Now, when we want to talk about the soundstage and imaging of the legacy fours, this. If this were my head, the Legacy 4s, I think, they are just around my head. They feel a bit more wider than they are deep. Um, the center image of the Legacy 4s to my ears are about here. Um, Width-wise, they don't really go outside of my head a lot of the times, even with most music. They're quite consistent. Uh, imaging accuracy uh, with the Legacy 4s is about like 45-ish degrees based on my ears. So, yeah, I think that's quite good. Now, um, there's just not a lot of things to comment now. Now, we'll just get into build quality and overall packaging you get, which is huge. You, you get this huge package from the audio you get. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's massive. Like, it's, it's freaking massive. And compared to the BTR3, the BTR3 is just minuscule compared to the packaging. For an IEM, this is probably one of the biggest packaging as I've ever received, uh, next to the EX1000s. And there's quite a good reason that you do get this package, because you get this massive case, which... Oh god. Which, if I can get this out, has another case in it. Caseception. Voila. I don't know if you're buying an IEM or buying a case, but yeah. Anyway, I I'm pretty sure if they've skipped this region, they probably could have cut down the cross uh, cost significantly. But all right, I mean. So you get another small case for your IEMs. I think these will probably fit the IEMs with a small Bluetooth receiver. Probably something like the ES hundreds, ES one hundreds will fit in here with these. Um, I, I actually haven't tried that. I should probably should have probably tried that before I recorded this video. Yeah, they do fit. So yeah, BT, the BTR fives will definitely not fit here. So because they're significantly larger, um, and you get uh, you get what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. You got six pairs of ear tips, uh, and they look quite similar in terms of size. When you when you go through these sizes, um, I don't. I was not able to pick this out, this section out. I didn't want to break it, cause this is not mine. It's it seems to be stuck in there, so I don't. I don't know if you should be able to remove this or not. I don't want to force it, cause I'm afraid of breaking it. These are not mine. These are Brian's. Uh, there's also this section where you can put your IEMs in if you want to, but you can remove this section. This I know, cause I've tried. I've put these foams back in. I actually don't know how what you're supposed to do with this case. I don't think you're supposed to carry this whole thing all the time. And I don't think this, there's sufficient space to put in the IEMs and your DAP or something like that. So I don't know what the purpose is of having such a big case. But they've provided it anyway. So yeah, I don't think most DAPs are this small. I think only the Shandling M0s and such will be will fit in here. 
um, but yeah aside from that you just get the manual all those things um, some s sticker not stickers this is just some war QC stuff oops and yeah that's that's pretty much the packaging you, you you get all of these I don't think they don't provide you with any cleaner or any such things but you get this big ass case so yeah it's freaking massive I, 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 I don't really support having such big cases in this price range because I'd rather have a price cut compared to a big case but yeah anyway so with that out of the way, we'll just talk about the IEM's build quality itself. Uh, build quality and fit. See, the fit of the IEM's are pseudo custom. If you have problems with pseudo custom fits, if you have very small ears, these will probably not fit you. I have normal medium-ish ears, medium to large ears, so these fit me quite well. Um, I had no problems with uh, putting on ear tips whatsoever. Uh, they have this sort of kind of notch on the IEM's. So they, so ear tips can stick indeed. So the something like the CP one hundreds and stuff will still hold. So your ear tips won't be left behind on your ears, which tends to happen with these full resin shell IEMs, if they don't have this notch in the nozzle. Um, from what I know, these can be uh, you can order these as custom IEMs, and I think they are made to order. Um, that is why every one of those IEMs have like the. Uh, serial number and such um, the overall shell faceplate of the shell looks very nice I think this is probably I prefer this way much more than s the design of the Legacy 3's which has a mechanic mechanical watch sort of design and I think these look quite nice I think that's mostly personal preference, but yeah, I should just point it out. And the um, two pin connectors are flush connectors. They're very tight. I'm not able to pull out this cable. I don't want to risk breaking it. Um, they're very, very tight. Um, the provided cable has this sort of like notch for whatever reason. So it kind of shows up like like this. I don't know why, but... Okay, there's also a fan on top of here. I don't know if this fan goes to the nozzle or I think this fan just goes to the dynamic driver because I was still able to feel uh, the pressure in my ear when I was inserting these IEMs. Um, so I believe they are, they are actually fully sealed but there is a fan to the dynamic driver. So overall isolation I think is quite good but it's not the best obviously. Now, um, aside from that, the cable itself is quite supple. It is a bit microphonic. The chin slider works quite well. No issues there. The cable going from the uh, from the splitter down though feels a bit stiff. And this is the most micro uh, microphonic, not micro microphonic part of the cable. So yeah, it, it it feels a bit stiff, but I think it's workable. Although I I, I don't like straight jacks on IEMs. Portable devices should not have straight jacks. They should have angled jacks so that they work well with phones So they don't break your phone's headphone jack when you put them in your pocket But okay, anyway uh, Yeah, that's Mostly what I have to talk about the build quality and the fit of the um, Legacy force and whatever came in the packaging and we'll just run through a comparison between something that's in this price range, um, actually no, the, these two IEMs that I have with me here, the ER2XRs and the Blessing 2s are below and above the price range of the Legacy 4s. Now, the Legacy 4s are sold at 200-ish dollars. And these vary from country to country, it seems. So, and I'm on Amazon, these are $200. The ER2XRs, I cannot get in Indonesia, actually. These are uh, originally sold in the US and such for around $100. Even less, sometimes, they are usually sold at like $80-ish. The ER2SE model, which is the less popular model, is being sold at $80-ish. Um, the, these go on discount very frequently, so they're usually... Uh, 
380-ish dollars, and the Blessing 2s are at 350 dollars. So they're significantly more expensive than the Legacy 4s, and these are significantly more cheaper than the Legacy 4s. Now, the reason why I'm comparing to these two is that um, the Legacy 4 is uh, at a bit of an odd spot because of the presence of the Air 2 XRs, and they are quite close to the Blessing 2s in terms of overall tonal pl 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 pleasance overall how and how pleasant the overall tonality is now if you have heard the blessing twos you did not like them because they were a bit too shouty and probably have a bit too much bass knock it a bit down you can get the legacy force the legacy force have uh, a bit less capable technicalities but overall it's a bit of a s more safer tuning the Legacy 4s, I would say, on any price range, I think these are a very safe tuned IEM. These are probably closest to what I would consider to be as neutral, with a bit more of a bright neutral, I would say. The Legacy 4s base does not, is not as present as I would normally like a neutral IEM to be. Neutral with a dynamic driver and a BA driver varies quite greatly you'll have to hear the differences between the two um by yourself you have to experience a neutral iem with a dynamic driver and a neutral iem with a ba driver and you'll understand what i'm talking about um but i think overall at this price range at 200 dollars the legacy force are a very well tuned iem with just a little slight lack cluster technicality and the only reason that I'm able to nitpick as such, if the ER2XRs were not present, I would say these would be a very great purchase. The ER2XRs are just the sort of an anomaly. The sort of it's kind of illegal for them to exist at this price. The ER2XRs at seventy dollars, which is less than half what the Legacy Fours are being sold. Although I must mention that in my country where I live here in Indonesia, these are sold at 2 million and these are sold at 3-ish million. So these are two-thirds of the price instead of less than half of the price because of taxes and uh, shipping and all those things. So keep that in mind. But in your country, they might differ quite greatly. Um, the Legacy 4s compared to the ER2 XRs, I believe, are nowhere near worth double the price they're not twice as good as the ER2XRs. They're quite similar in technical c capabilities. The Legacy 4s are a bit more safe tuning. They have less bass, but they also have less texture in the bass compared to the ER2XRs. Um, the Legacy 4s has a bit more relaxed upper mid and treble region compared to the ER2XRs. The ER2XRs are a bit more aggressive, but the Legacy 4s has an overall way better sound stage and imaging compared to the ER2XRs. Now, one of the problems that I see with people on why they would want to completely avoid the ER2 XRs and wouldn't mind getting the Legacy 4s at more than twice the price is, well, first of all, for that difference in tonality with the Legacy 4s being a bit more relaxed overall and the fit. The ER2 XRs are a deep insertion IEM, very deep insertion IEM. They go very deep into your ears and a lot of people might find it very uncomfortable which is not a problem with the Legacy 4s, and you can get these even as a custom shell IEM, so that might be a, a selling point for you. You could get custom tips for the ER2 XRs too, but I think at that point, mm, the only difference that is there will be just the overall tonality and such, but the, if I recall correctly, the custom ear molds for the ER2 XRs are quite expensive, so might want to keep that in mind. If if it is indeed just the fit that is killing you uh, from getting the ER2 XRs, you might want to look into that custom mode option. But if it isn't, then I don't know. I this is mostly up to you. Do you like a more relaxed V shape ish sound? Get the Legacy Force if you d want to have that price cut. If you don't mind a more aggressive tuning. I think the ER2 XRs are the way to go. The Legacy 4s are just in this sort of bridge between extreme killer and end game sort of goal of the Blessing 2s. 
So it they're sort of in an odd spot, I would say. Uh, I think I've been rambling a bit too much. I've been I've had too much coffee, I, I believe, and this review is getting a bit too long. So we'll just end it here. Like if you liked it, comment what you think, and subscribe if you want more content like this. And yeah, I'll leave what Brian thinks at the end of the video. So see you guys next time.